what is up you guys my name is madison welcome back to my channel i'm a nerd and i have a lot of books and i remember a couple months ago one of my best friends was talking about how she likes to you know look at book collections and i was like that's a pretty good idea because a couple months ago maybe about a year ago i don't know i don't know I had a video of me literally just like getting rid of books just like getting rid of them which was painful because I love my books a lot but it was okay because now I'm left with books that I genuinely want to read or books that my mother is making me keep because I have three technically places that I store my books but I have two bookshelves bookshelves um being used very loosely and yeah so that is what we are going to do today is look at my books yeah <laughs> okay so my first set of books I actually keep next to my bed because these are what because these are books that I want to read throughout the year um and I have one that I do keep in my backpack because I like to have a book on me pretty much at all times when I'm at school so it looks like I'm doing something when I'm really not, you know? So, yeah. So the book that I keep in my backpack is uh, The Last of Her Name by Jessica Corey. Uh, it's decent. I've read like three pages of it, but I like it. So I have Emma by Jane Austen. I have a couple of Jane Austen's books and I don't really like any of them other than Emma. This one I actually got from like a really big church by me, but it's Halflings by Heather Birch. I haven't read it yet, but I really, really want to, but I've had it for like two years. We'll see. I have a book that I've read like four times and it's Dracula and it's really good. And I really like older books. I recommend this one. The first Harry Potter book, which I keep next to my bed, which is the one that I'm currently reading. And I've read this book before. And it's not my least favorite, but it's not my favorite of the Harry Potter books. And also JK Rowling is like low-key a horrible person, but we're not going to talk about that. Next, I have a book that my mother was really excited about. And she was like, oh my gosh, you have to read it. And it's Mr. Penumbra's 24-hour bookstore by Robin Sloan. And I've read the back of it. And it seems interesting. I just haven't read it yet. So the next one um, is a movie that I really wanted to see, but... My mother was like, no, so I was just, I never saw it, but she let me uh, get the book and it's The Shape of Water by Daniel Cross. And I've read a little bit of it um, and it's not bad at all. And the illustrations are phenomenal. Um, and it's just great. The next book I have by my bed is Paper Towns by John Green and I have not read any of his books at all and I've seen that one movie that everybody was all hyped up about but like the, the kids with cancer the fault in our stars I watched some of that and I didn't cry but I'm also apparently an emotionless bee so yeah next I have Grimm's complete fairy tales because I like books like these with like little books inside and I like fairy tales and I like poems and it's just really great, okay? Next, I have The Essential Tales of Edgar Allan Poe. And one of his poems was used into in P.S. I Still Love You and I like screamed because it's literally my favorite book series turned into a movie and it has like one of the best poets, literally of all time and it's just great and I just love it and it's just wonderful yeah and the last book I keep by my bed is Hans Christian Andersen's classic fairy tales and I got this book specifically to read The Little Mermaid and then I read the entire thing in like a whole night just like I got it on a Saturday and I stayed up all night um to read it and then I had work Sunday morning which probably wasn't a very good idea but I did it like look at look how beautiful this cover is it's just phenomenal like it's just so pretty okay you know it's just it's just phenomenal and amazing and wonderful and 
Hans Christian Andersen really just do be my favorite. Yeah. So my next bookshelf looks like this. It's kind of like messy on top, so we're just gonna ignore that. Also, look how cute my little reindeer is that I got from one of my friends. Okay, yeah, but we're just gonna ignore that. But like, this is one of my bookshelves. We're not gonna go into that bottom drawer because there's nothing interesting in there. Yeah, but we are gonna go and look at the books. So starting with the top little shelf here, I have The Secret Garden by uh, Francis Hodgson Burnett. This was actually a gift from my older brother to my dad, but I stole it because I also really, really like this book. And yeah. And then I have the Agatha Christie mystery collection. And first of all, this looks like gorgeous. But this is uh, Death on the Nile, and my mother and I used to just sit and watch, like, the show based off of these. And I called it Pablo because I couldn't say Poirot, and it just stuck, you know. And then next I have The Diary of Anne Frank, and I got maybe halfway through this before I had to put it down because, like, dang, you know? Like, my family had to go through that on both sides, so, like... It was just really, really hard to read it. And I got it from the library and I just didn't finish it. So I turned it back in and then my mom bought me like the actual book. It's a lot smaller than the one from the library, but yeah, I just haven't finished it yet because I couldn't. Next I have Miss Peregrine's uh, Home for Peculiar Children. I want to see the movies. I want to read the other books. I really like this. It's just great. And then next, because I am literally five years old, I have the Descendants, like, extra books. Yeah. I also, like, work with children, and sometimes, you know, I have them, so sometimes they come in handy. But I have Mouse Spellbook and Mouse Diary, and they're cute. I've looked at them quite a bit. Next, I have just, like, a really awesome graphic novel. It's by Joe Sugg, and it's usually named Evie. And I know that his sister wrote, like, wrote, like, fictional novels or whatever that I do have. They're, like, somewhere on the bottom shelf. And they were ghostwritten, so I don't know if this one was ghostwritten. But it's still a good book, and I still like it. And so, or a good graphic novel. So I still look at it, and I still read it, and it's just great. And then also, because I'm an absolute uh, dork, I have both Dan and Phil books. I got both of them from Target. Yeah. Yeah. And then, also because I'm a nerd, I just kind of have like a bunch of poetry books. Uh, I have The Princess Saves Herself in this one by Amanda Lovelace. This is a good one. I have uh, Broken Flowers another, and Other Stairways to Heaven. And I, I put a sticky note on all of the ones that I kind of like needed to like remember. So, yeah. And then I have uh, both of Rupi Carr's books, uh, Milk and Honey and The Sun and Her Flowers. These hold special meaning in my heart, so I'm just never going to get rid of them. And it's not because of the book itself, it's because of somebody attached to, I attached to memory to. So, yeah. And then I have this thingy that my mother got me for Christmas two years ago. And it has uh, Quidditch Through the Ages, The Tales of Beetle Bard, and Fantastic Beasts, and Where to Find Them. And yeah. And like they come in like house colors. So like we have red, blue, and green. I wish that there was a yellow one just so I could like have all the house colors in like book form. Cause I think that would be really cool. And there's like a bunch of like magazines and comic books and stuff, so yeah, this one was free. It, yeah, they're just kind of like a bunch of like an Archie comic, uh, Batman, Supergirl, Harley Quinn, things like that. And then I have three magazines. One has Death Camera on the front, and that's why I haven't gotten rid of it. This one has Mackenzie's Eagle on the front. And this has my school in it. And I was in the band for like three months. So going into this second shelf here, we had three stacks, kind of like we did up here. Um, so yeah, 
The first one I have is Openly Straight by Bill Coningsberg, I think. This is a really good book. Um, I like books that spread awareness, and this one does. Uh, and then I have Phantom of the Opera by Gaston Loro. I got it, and I didn't read it, but I have it. And it's one of my best friends' favorite movies. It's two of my best friends' favorite movies, actually. Um, and I've seen it, and I really enjoy it. And then I have To Kill a Mockingbird, which I read last year and the year before for school. And then I read it on my own twice. So, yeah. It's kind of, like, beaten up because I did have to, like, shove it in my backpack for four months. Next, I have The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald. Favorite book, favorite movie. Really excited to read it next year for my junior year. I love it so much. Next, I have four of the six books from the program series. I have The Program, The Treatment, The Remedy, and The Epidemic. I have read two of these and I refuse to read all of them again until I get the other two because this is my second favorite book series literally in the entire world and yeah. Uh, next, I have Thriving with Social Anxiety because my mother thought this would help me and I got to page 52 or 53 before I gave up on reading it. Next, I have A Beautiful Blue Death, which I used to bring to school to read. And I got pretty far into it in the amount of time that I had read it. Um, and it's a really, really good book. It's by Charles Finch. Nothing really to say to that. And then I also have The September Society by Charles Finch. I haven't read that one yet. And then I have Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda because... First of all, it was a really good book. I read it last year, not for school or anything, but I needed a book last year for school to get like extra uh, credit points in English. So I brought this one and I read it and it was really good. And then I saw the movie and cried like a little baby, you know. <clears throat> <clears throat> Next I have Psych, uh, Mind Altering Murder. My mother got and I wanted to read and I haven't yet because I don't know, I just haven't. Next I have uh, from the Notebooks of a Middle School Princess, Royal Wedding Disaster by Meg, uh, Cabot or something like that. I don't know, Cabot. But this is pretty much a second book in The Princess Diaries. Yeah, there's nothing else to say about that. And I have this book, which I've read twice. It's Folded Notes from High School by Matt Boren and... It's cute. It's really cute. And then I have Up to This Point, which I've read tw Ooh, twice? Three times? It's a really, really good book. And it's about a, a ballerina, which I am, sort of, and a scientist, or a scientist's daughter who is the ballerina, I guess, who goes to Antarctica. And it's just, it's a really, really good book. And I really recommend it. And you should totally get it. It's by Jennifer Longo. I recommend it and then I have the wicked city by Beatrice Williams and this is also a phenomenal book I got it at the library and I kept renewing it renewing it and renewing it and I still didn't finish it so I just kind of like picked it up and then I finished it and it was phenomenal and it was amazing and wonderful and on this shelf I'd also have a work in progress by Connor Franta but currently my best friend is reading it and I've read that book like 12 gazillion times because it's such a good book and I really want his other one. Yeah. Yeah. And then next I have The Duff by Cody Keplinger. I read the book and then I watched the movie because that was my mom's rule for this because she didn't think it was appropriate for me. But I did for rule and I read it and it was a really good book. It was also a really good movie. And then next I have two of the books from the vampire diaries uh the furry and dark reunion and the awakening and the struggle i don't know which one comes first maybe they're both they both come first i i don't really know 
um, but they're by LJ Smith. Yeah. And then the last one on the shelf is The Girl They Left Behind by Roxanne Villette. That. I'm not going to attempt to pronounce that, but can you tell that I have a thing for books from the 1940s? Yeah. And then on this last bottom shelf here, I call this my hardcover series. It was up here. You saw two series, three, one of something like that. And they were all paperback. But down here I have like uh, the series that come in like hardcovers. But starting off, I do have the rest of the Harry Potter series. So I have the Chamber of Secrets, the Prisoner of Azkaban, which is so far my favorite out of all of them. Maybe it'll change. Who knows? Um... The Goblet of Fire, uh, The Order of the Phoenix, The Half-Blood Prince, The Deathly Hollows, and then The Cursed Child Special Rehearsal Edition Script. Yeah. So. And then next I have four of the five uh, Mage Runner books. So I have just the original Mage Runner. I have the Scorch Trials, the Death Cure, and the Kill Order. And I almost picked up the fifth one, but because all of them are hardcover, I want all of them to be hardcover. And the one I saw was paperback, so I just didn't. And going back to what I said about uh, Joe Sug, I do have his sisters. Uh, book series, Girl on Mine, Girl on Tour, and Going Solo. The Ghost Rider did a good job. That's all I'm gonna say. Um, and then I have my favorite book series, which just recently became a movie, and its sequel also just recently came out, and it is, uh, To All the Boys I've Loved Before, P.S. I Still Love You, and Always and Forever, Lara Jean. So, they have the original books that... I got and read before the movie came out and I was talking to my mom about how I wish there was a movie and then when the movie came out I literally cried so and then the last little section of books that I have on this bookshelf I have or chasing the northern star by Robert Morgan this is the only book I have that isn't like in a new series that I have on that shelf and then I have The Isle of the Lost, Return to the Isle of the Lost, and Rise of the Isle of the Lost, which is the Descendants books by Melissa de la Cruz. I have all three of those. And like, this cover art is like, gorgeous. And then this is my last bookshelf kind of thing. Um, it's in a little nook in my corner. And we're not going to go into that drawer because not related. But I do want to talk about the things up here because... I like them. So I have some Harry Potter bookmarks, and then I have Fred, and then Belle, and then Harley Quinn, and then two more Harley Quinns, and yeah. And then I have a thing that was on that I pop figure, but my little brother broke it off. And then I have Hermione's wand, and then an arrow, but this one I'll talk about, right? So my best friend in the entire world, hi, you can see me, swag. Uh, he made this for my birthday, and one, it's my lock screen, which is phenomenal. But he printed it out, and it's literally the lyrics of my favorite song. It's signed. There it is. Um, and it says, I don't effing care if you effing care, because I'm gonna live forever. And it's my favorite lyrics in my favorite song of all time by my favorite band of all time. And it's just, he framed it so nicely, and it's just, it's gorgeous. And I put it in my little fangirl collection because I fangirl over it every time I see it. And it's just really cute. So yeah, shout out to Jay, because I love him. Anyway. Excuse this, my, one of my brothers, one of my younger brothers drew on it, but this, I've had this literally for 16 years. So yeah, but I have just some other books in here and it's not, again, not an ideal way of storing books, but this is where I have to have them because I have no other space in my room for them. So yeah. Well, I know this isn't the best lighting and I, I'm pretty sure that goes over here, but if not, that's cool too, but if it does, I'm sorry, I apologize. But I am just gonna be pulling books out of here and showing you and then putting them down and yeah. Anyway, uh, the first book that I have is 
Lady Chatterley's Lover by D.H. Lawrence. It's again one of the older books. Um, it came out in uh, 1928. And then next I have the Hunger Games series. I'm sorry that they are super reflective, but my grandmother got me these for Christmas two years ago because Christmas two years ago was my book Christmas. But yeah, I have Mocking Jay, the original, and Catching Fire. And then I have Everything Everything by Nicola Yoon. I think that's how you say it. I don't know. I haven't read this one yet. I really, really want to. I want to watch the movie, everything like that. Next, I have uh, The Babysitter's Club, The Summer Before. Yeah. It's by Anna Martin. Next, I got this in at my fifth grade book fair. And I really like it. It's Denon in uh, Norvelt by Jack Gantos. The top of it is like all messed up, which proves to show how much I like this. I liked this book. Next, I have a book in a series because it says book one, and it's uh, Werewolf: Rise of the Wolf by Curtis Jobling. I used to have a really big thing. This is also kind of reflective. I apologize. I used to have a really big thing in like mythology and supernatural and things like that. So. I picked this up and I read it and it was really good as far as I remember. Uh, next I have Changeling by Philippa Gregory. Yeah. And then I have a book by Anne Perry, Death on Blackheath. My mother wants me to get into murder mysteries so she just gave me all of her old ones. Yeah. Next I have a really cute book and it's called Twerp and it's by Mark Goldblatt and I read this fifth grade and sixth grade actually and it was cute. And then next I have Really Professional Inter Internet Person by Jen McAllister. To be completely honest, the only reason I still have this is because I hold special value in my YouTube books and especially now because now I don't have Tyler Oakley's book and I'm really sad about it but it happens. Next, this is a Christian book. I got this from like the Christian section of Barnes and Noble because I thought it was really cool, but it's Always Watching uh, Elite Guardians by Lynette Eason. And yeah. Next, I have Mansfield Park by Jane Austen. Have not read it, kind of don't want to. This one, this one also holds a very special place in my heart it's uh the heartbreak messenger and it's really cute and i relate to it on a personal level but i I, don't know, I just really like it and i got that in fifth grade as well next i have persuasion by jane austen again i mean i've read some of it just not not all of it next i have the timekeeper by M mitch alborn uh i have north anger abbey by jane austen I have Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. I have Sense and Sensibility by Jane Austen. I have The Heiress of Winterwood by Sarah Ladd. And honestly, the only reason I have it is because I think that this cover is gorgeous and this dress is gorgeous and I love it. And I haven't even read it yet. Next, I have like the Shadowhunter series. Uh, City of Bones and City of Ashes by Cassandra Clare. Have yet to read them. It's kind of why they're over here, but yeah. And the last book that I have to show you is another Anne Perry book, and it is The Midnight at uh, Marble Arch. And I also used to have two of these. And I've still never read it, so... Like the books over here are ones that I haven't like read in a really long time or just haven't read. So yeah. So that is it for today's video. Um, I hope you enjoyed. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe down below. All my social media will also be down below. And I will see you next time, whenever that may be. Bye!